very much for joining us today. We pause and remember a year of COVID caring and give thanks for every individual in the Bon Secours Charity Health System who gave their all and more. For the first time in a century, people around the world have faced a devastating health threat, the COVID-19 pandemic. Because we are called to care for others by our mission and our ministry, we all know better than most the suffering, pain, and heartbreak caused by this outbreak. Our staff and physicians have responded with courage and compassion, sacrifice, and selfless love. Our dedicated staff have used your gifts and talents to be good help to those in need. You have served with humility and respect for the dignity of all. We pray for the day when this virus and all its variant strains have been eradicated. We long to freely gather with loved ones and dear friends and colleagues to hug and to kiss with no fear of spreading a virus. We will get to this deeply desired place. that is attributed to Pablo Picasso. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Maybe over this past year during this pandemic, you discovered a gift you didn't realize you possessed. Maybe it was a gift you found out you had that surprised you. Gift of resilience, gift of strength. Whatever the gift was, you certainly gave it away freely and selflessly as heroes every day during this past year. The gift I see that you all gave away was the gift of your very self, mind, body, spirit, and soul. Maybe there were times you had to be the level-headed one in a difficult situation by being that peacemaker. What a gift. Maybe there were times you were tired and needed a break, but just couldn't take one because someone needed you. What a gift. Maybe there were times your spirit was low, but you had to lift someone else's spirit. What a gift. Lord, Make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved, as to love, for it is in giving that we truly receive. We ask a blessing on all Bon Secours Charity Health System and all its heroes as we continue to care for our patients and communities. And thank you for being that gift, and thank you for giving of yourself as gift. God bless you as we continue to be good help to those in need. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel of Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. 
a priest happened to be going down the road. But when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The story was submitted for the Stories of Grace, and it was written by Rosita Benjamin, who's going to read it now. When COVID-19 patients failed many of the units at Good Samaritan Hospital, we were overwhelmed with fear of the unknown. A sense of apprehension filled our hallways our units were transformed, and all of our staff became un unrecognizable, covered in personal protective equipment. Our eyes told a story of fear. We felt lost trying to process what was happening. Our nursing world, as we know, it had changed, but we held steadfast to the core of nursing, which is caring. Not only were we scared for ourselves, but scared for children, our families, our communities, and our world. We fought hard for our patients, even though many lost their fight. It was quality, heartfelt nursing care that helped many survive. Although families and friends were absent in the last moments, patients were not alone. They were in the caring and loving hands of our nursing staff. We prayed, held their hands, sang and cried with and for our patients. We made sure our patients were not alone, fighting in the struggle to survive. Speaking to families, answering questions, and reassuring them that their loved ones were, were being cared for was a daily ritual. In the words of Maya, Angelou's, of Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel inside. Have never been more fitting as they are now in this pandemic. When patients were finally discharged, it was as if a ray of sunshine burst through the black clouds, bringing hope and raising our spirits. The overhead announcement of Celebration Sun, followed by the fight song, by Rachel Platten, played morning through evening. Discharges brought us joy, knowing another patient has beaten COVID-19. The free enough staff, along with others, lined the hallways with chairs, clapping and tambourines as patients were discharged. The jingling of tambourines marked a celebration of life and recovery. The triumphant sounds echoed from the third floor through the elevators and into the entrance of the hospital. This celebration was a sign of hope for patients and staff. The words of Rachel Platten fight song. This is my song, take back my life song, prove I'm all right song. My powers turned on, starting right now I'll be strong. I'll play my fight song was a tribute to each person's individual journey of healing.
Living through these unprecedented times was a life-changing event for all that have experienced it. We all have a renewed appreciation for life and for one another. We fought and will continue to fight COVID-19 as a strong and resilient family here at Good Samaritan Hospital. It is my privilege to share this story of grace submitted by Teresa Krell, RN, clinical coordinator for the operating rooms at St. Anthony Community Hospital. Unfortunately, Teresa is unable to join us today. And Teresa wrote, the mission of Bon Secours Charity Health System is to make visible God's love and to be good help to those in need, especially those who are poor, vulnerable, and dying. I would like to tell you about an exceptional nurse who represents this mission statement in every way possible. Helen Jackson has worked for Bon Secours for almost 13 years. Helen brought with her an experience level that could not be bought at any price. Helen has med surge, ICU, emergency room, and interventional radiology experience. Helen worked in the ICU at St. Anthony for 11 years. Helen's desire to always be learning and challenged in her life led her to move to a job in the operating room. For the past two years, Helen has been reaching her goal as a seasoned OR nurse. Others look to Helen for advice and mentoring. When the COVID crisis was descending upon us, Helen, like all of us, was unsure and afraid of what was to come. Not knowing what kinds of patients this virus is going to bring us and if we ourselves could become ill. Helen also knew where she was needed the most and wanted to work in the ICU. Helen spent two months working side by side with her former peers on the ICU taking outstanding care of our sickest patients at the most vulnerable time. Holding their hands and praying with them and for them when their families weren't able to sit by their critically ill patients' sides. Helen is a single mother of a young teenage daughter who, at the beginning of this crisis, sent her to live with relatives on Long Island to keep her safe because of the job her mother does, not knowing she would not see her daughter for two full months. Helen also volunteered to be sent to Good Samaritan Hospital to help when the ICU staff was inundated by exceedingly sick patients and were falling ill themselves. Helen is one of the many people I am sure you've been told about over the last few weeks. I know you have prayed for her and all of us during this time and will continue to pray for our well-being into the future. And she shared, being a nurse means you will never be bored. You will always be frustrated. You will be surrounded by challenges, so much to do and so little time. You will carry immense responsibility and very little authority. You will step into people's lives and you will make a difference. Some will bless you and some will curse you. You will see people at their worst and at their best. You will never cease to be amazed at people's capacity for love, courage, and endurance. You will see life begin and you will see life end. You will experience resounding triumphs and devastating failures. You will cry a lot. You will laugh a lot. You will laugh a lot. You will know what it is to be human and to be humane. Thank you, Teresa. I'm Mary Remington, the Director of Spiritual Care at Good Samaritan Hospital. And what I'm about to read to you is a submission for Stories of Grace for 2020. I wrote it on June 15th regarding a patient under our care. It has now been over two months since he has been here. COVID-19 destroyed his lungs and body, leaving him vented and trached and with limited brain function. For weeks upon weeks, his eyes have been closed. He is in his 40s with a heart that continues to beat amidst his multiple comorbidities. His dedicated sister, also his health proxy, waits at home for a miracle and prays for him daily. For weeks now, Unit T3 in the spiritual care department 
help set up daily FaceTimes for her to see her brother. We roll the iPad near his face and she begins to talk, to pray, to play music for him, all from her home into his hospital room. In the recent past weeks, his eyes have begun to open and he is showing signs of paying attention to who's in the room and what's happening. Now he looks directly at her on the screen, still unable to speak and unable to move, but looking right at her. Will the miracle arrive that his sister is praying for? Will his body somehow shift into strength and healing to a degree that gives his life back? Clinicians agree very likely not, but the bottom line is we don't ultimately know. No one knows. And without health insurance and the restrictions on where he can receive care right now, it seems he could stay with us indefinitely and we will continue to be the witnesses of his life journey. I see the staff continuing to care for him with a unique tenderness, as if they too are being held in the sacred question of what it means to be alive, what it means to love and to hold on to hope. And what of grace? Maybe it's just the return of his eye gaze back to her upon the screen that will be enough. It's already more than any of us could have asked for or ever imagined. End of letter. And I want to let you know that the patient did eventually go home after 274 days of care at Good Samaritan Hospital. He left being able to communicate verbally, show emotions, and move over 50% of his body on his own volition. His outcomes were nothing short of a miracle. And as you see in the words I wrote then, I didn't know all this would be his outcome. But there was wonder and hope held by many in his midst. And I believe ultimately prayers that were answered. Prayer of the faithful. Every human being is the object of God's infinite tenderness. Every person is immensely holy and deserves our love. After each petition, please respond, Amen. As the physical distance between our sisters and brothers increases, may the spiritual distance between each of us and our higher power decrease. Amen. Amen. When we cannot hold hands in earnest, may our hearts be bound together in a spirit of solidarity and love. Amen. When the spread of disease threatens our safety, may we spread kindness, hope, and a sense of security to all who are vulnerable and alone. Amen. Amen. When illness occupies our minds, may our souls be filled with a vision of healing. Amen. Amen. Loving God, Things do not always go as we had planned. At these times, help us to understand that you are guiding us. Amen. Amen. Shelter us from the harm and remind us that while our hearts plan our course, you are directing our steps. Amen. We live in gratitude for the contributions of our charity staff, physicians, and surrounding communities. It is your resiliency, compassion, and love that kept us moving through this difficult and tumultuous year. Amen. We acknowledge the sacrifices of our staff and physicians with their families and loved ones as we cared for our patients in our facilities. Amen. We pray in gratitude for the outpouring of love, support, and gifting of our local communities and area businesses. Amen. Amen. Remembrance of Albert Villafuerte, and Carly McGuire. We bid farewell to Albert Villaforte and Carly McGuire, beloved employees who battled COVID, fought the good fight, and went home to God in May 2020. Albert was a tenured and dedicated member of the Good Samaritan Hospital Respiratory Department. He was greatly loved and prayerfully followed by his wife and two children. Staff and colleagues surrounded him with gentle compassion, skillful caring, and sincere admiration.
Albert died on May 9th. Carly McGuire was a care partner at Bon Secours Community Hospital since 2010. She was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disease about three years ago and had to resign from her position. Her mother and sister are employed with Bon Secours Community Hospital. It is a family tradition of love and caring. In the spring of 2020, Carly was hospitalized with complications from her autoimmune disease and developed COVID-19. Carly's smile was contagious. She truly lived our mission and was a good help to those in need. She was transferred to a New York City hospital where she was called home on May 14th. Both Albert and Carly will live on in the kindness they shared and the love and friendship they brought into our lives. In the rising of the sun and in its on its going down, we remember them when we are weary and in need of strength we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Greater God, we pray for one another. It is your healing ministry that brings us together today and always. We know that we experience challenges and we have the gifts to face them. Our mission and ministry requires us to remain connected. Connected to each other, we strengthen relationships as we minister together. Relationships with one another, relationship with patients, residents, clients, and their loved ones. Our God is guided and gifted as for our ministry of healing. We consider the prayer of St. Teresa, St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Your eyes are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ must look out on the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to, do, to go about doing good. You, yours are the hands with which he is to bless his people. We pray in gratitude for all of our Bon Secours charity staff and physicians serving the people of God in a very difficult time in our history and in our world. Your sacrifice in the care of others is a gift. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.